Right now, in this room, there are probably many who aspire to be founders. Sitting amongst you, a bunch of founders, just like me. Founders start companies because they're attracted to solving problems and are willing to forego short-term gains in order to achieve something bigger. In my case, the problem I wanted to solve was financial transparency and helping people make smarter financial decisions. However, if we dig a little deeper, there's probably an even stronger and more personal reason why founders choose to start companies instead of working for somebody else. And that's because we want to achieve freedom. Freedom means different things to different people. Freedom for me ultimately comes down to time. Time to spend on what I want, when I want, and with who I want. Let me tell you my story. It's 2009, and I'm 27 years old. I've just graduated from the National University of Singapore. I put in the last of my savings of $5,000 into starting Money Smart by myself. Like most solo founders, I'm a one-man army. I'm doing everything from sales to product to marketing. And after a frantic few months, finally, there's some revenue coming in. It's just enough to keep the business going, but still not quite enough to pay myself a living wage. My girlfriend at the time, Vali, is incredibly supportive of my ambitions. She knows that a lot of my time is going to be spent in the business. Many of our date nights are her treats because I'm reinvesting everything back into the company. Fast forward 14 years later, and the company has grown from strength to strength. We're now 150 people strong across two markets and are profitable. Vali and I are also proud parents of a charming and inquisitive six-year-old son. He's also really good looking and very mischievous. And according to her, the mischief comes from me. In truth, it's not all roses and butterflies. As the company continues to grow, so too do the challenges. This causes the rise of massive professional and personal challenges. At work, my time is not my own. I'm so busy and every day is filled with back-to-back -back meetings with barely a breather. It feels like I'm living in my own personal Groundhog Day. On top of that, everybody wants just five minutes. Meanwhile, the real work, the one that actually accomplishes something, gets sandwiched in between and usually has to give way for more urgent things. My energy depletes much quicker than ever before, and I feel like an old iPhone on the newest OS. You know, it's well built and it still works after all these years, but it just struggles to keep up with the latest software update. A few months ago, I came to the stark realization that after 14 years, all I had created for myself was a job. A job where most of my time wasn't even spent on things I enjoyed doing. I had lost track of the bigger picture. All of my work commitments took a massive toll on my personal life. I was constantly stressed, I had less time to exercise, and I had even lesser time to spend with my family. It came to a point where my son didn't even want to spend time with me over the weekend because he didn't feel that personal connection with me. That hurt. You can schedule work meetings, but you can't schedule the feeling of connection from your child. In short, my life and my calendar were a mess. My situation posed a challenge that I needed to resolve. I yearned to have the space to think ahead about how to create a bigger and brighter future for the company. That's what I should be doing as CEO. How do I do that while also taking care of myself and my family? I know that many other founders struggle with the same situation as me. I'm here to share with you how I bounced back, broke the gridlock, and found my energy again. I zero-based my calendar. Zero-based calendaring is a process to plan a rhythm for your life. It involves starting with a blank calendar and filling it up with intention. That way, you ensure that no time slips away towards priorities that you did not plan yourself. Imagine it's five years from now and you're still running your company. How would you design your time if you could spend it in any way that you want? To get a clearer picture, you might ask yourself these four questions. Number one, what type of work gives you energy and adds value to the company? 
Number two, what inspires you to think differently and with clarity? Number three, what would empower you to show up as a better leader? And number four, what do you need to feel balanced and rejuvenated? With my answers, here's how I design my future time. I came up with six time categories. Self-care time. I realized after reflection that I needed regular time on weekdays for fitness and family. I intersperse them throughout my calendar first, even if it means taking some time out of the workday. I needed this to show up at my best. After all, what's the point of delivering for stakeholders if you miss your child growing up or miss spending quality time with your loved ones? Expansion time. Mondays are my sanctuary for learning and growth. I start my week off by decoding market trends, learning more about emerging technologies, and developing myself as a leader. Inspiration time. Tuesdays are where I block out the entire day to spend with my direct reports. We focus this time on how we can inspire each other. They know to send me an email if it's just updates. This shift reduces the noise and cre generates creative energy within the company. Creation time. Wednesdays are when I put on my thinking cap, connecting the dots for the future. Given what's happening around us, what should we do? I bundle my thinking into clear memos so that I can share my vision and action plan with the team. Exploration time. Thursdays are my days to venture beyond our walls. I meet with industry peers, investors, and fellow startup founders. This is where I uncover opportunities and learn more about how others are viewing the world. Last but not least, collaboration time. Friday is focused on our weekly executive team meetings. We dedicate two to three hours to focus on a few pressing issues and deep dive into a few key topics. This is where I bring in the ideas, insights, and plans that I've gathered throughout the week and share them with my team. Before I could make space for the new, I needed to clear the decks. I eliminated everything that I should stop doing and aggressively delegated everything else to others. In doing so, I had to get comfortable that things may not always turn out exactly as I hoped. And that's OK. You might be wondering, what if I have an event or an urgent matter to attend to? Look, nothing is set in stone. Zero-based calendaring puts your priorities front and center. That way, you are always in conscious control of what truly matters. My old schedule looked like it was attacked by a confetti cannon. Now, it looks more like a parade of banners with each day having its own grand theme. My life has completely transformed thanks to zero-based calendaring. I'm more energized, clearer in my thinking, and more creatively engaged than ever before. Most importantly, I no longer carry the guilt of neglecting my relationships or my health. I've moved from a reactive state into proactively creating the future that I desire for myself. Earlier, I asked you to imagine that it's five years from now. I'm here to tell you that you don't have to wait five years to get there. I made this transformation in just a matter of months. So, if you ever find yourself on the brink of burnout and don't see a way out, remember that you can't pour from an empty cup. It begins with shifting your attentions to things that energize and rejuvenate you. When you fill up your cup, you'll have more to share with others. To my fellow and future founders here today, here's to a life of freedom and success. Cheers.